Was ist los? It's your German boy. Welcome to Planetarian, the reverie of a little planet. Now, I figured, you know, with the start of a new year, let's start some new games on this channel and actually kind of get us to a position where I can make more regular content for you guys. So, that little preface out of the way, I figured I picked this one because I know there's an anime adaptation that I've been planning to watch for a while. So I figured I would tackle the VN first to see how the anime stacks up to it. And it's sticking with my current theme of, uh, well, visual novels with android girls in them. So it's kind of a win-win from my perspective, but I don't know what you guys are going to have to say about it. So, you know, enough intro. Let's just dive right into this, shall we? Musical score is really good. Planetarium, how is it? Do you know what time it is? It's like a golden sunset. The mountains of Hoshigoshi are waiting for you. Planetarium, how is it? That's a bit of a long time. <sighs> Here we go. Both my eyes were shot through with light. I tore the night vision goggles off my face before they burned out my retinas. For several seconds, I wasn't able to do anything at all. However, the sounds that assailed me was neither the crack of machine gun fire, nor was it the hiss of nerve gas. <laughs> No, it was a young woman's voice, clear and sweet, completely out of place in the midst of the godforsaken rubble. Since it was reverberating off the high ceiling, it was difficult to ascertain its point of origin. I pointed my grenade launcher forward, alarmed, even though I let the tension of my trigger finger drain away, I kept the weapon pointed straight ahead. After all, sometimes intimidation alone was enough. However, if that other person was trying to kill me, the owner of that voice immediately fell silent. Then... She started apologizing with an incredible burst of energy. I really had no idea what she was talking about. Waves of bewilderment swirled through my head. Why was there a human being in a place like this? And why a young woman at that? 
Was this a trap laid by another junker? But if that was the case, why was I still alive? On top of that, why was this girl not quitting her chattering? <laughs> okay, where are we at then? Chisa figure of a person began to appear out of the light as the persistent after images oozed away. It seemed like a short young woman. I took a close look at her as I continued to cautiously point the barrel of my gun towards her. She looked to be maybe 15 or 16 years old. Long, lightly colored hair divided on both sides with ponytails. Strange earrings that almost totally concealed her ears. Bruh, I don't think those are earrings. <laughs> A hat sitting lightly on her head. Hair ornaments as wide as cargo bands. A short skirt that ended just above her knees. She was holding something in her arms, too. I couldn't imagine that it was a weapon, but its use as anything else was a complete mystery to me. This was simply an impossible scene. Her posture was more rigid and upright than even that of a toy soldier. The ceaseless chatter came to an end at last. She cocked her head slightly. There was a buzzing sound almost like that of a leaf beetle in flight along with her movement. Her long, unruly hair that was parted down the center suddenly billowed out even in the total absence of a breeze. It was almost as if her body was suspended in a sea of weightless silk threads. And at last, I understood. I understood what a defenseless little girl was doing in these uninhabited ruins. This being, who stood smiling like a fool before a man pointing a fucking 40mm high explosive grenade launcher at her was... A robot? Hi, robot Took you long enough to figure it out. She responded in delight. With a childish smile, she presented that thing she was holding in her hands to me. What the hell is that? I looked at it once again. Fluorescent bulbs, old-style microphones, power cords, camera lenses, pieces of copper wire, fragments of organic plastic. The variegated bundle of junk was wrapped in a roll of opaque film with ribbon cable tied and a bow at the bottom. I somehow got the impression that this situation was hopeless. Of course, I had never seen a bouquet of real flowers in my life. But it wasn't as if the obvious fact was lost on me. Those were absolutely not real flowers. They weren't even, for that matter, artificial flowers. Yeah, go ahead and put that in your sack. You could probably get some useful stuff out of that. She repeated those same words over again. Her smile seemed to carry no malice whatsoever. As a result, I accepted her so-called bouquet. Yeah, there could be some useful stuff in there. After I confirmed that there were no explosives or unusual artifacts in it, I threw it on the- oh, shit. Not exactly the most courteous thing to do, but... Are we gonna have to break another one, guys? Let's go! Oh my god, you asshole. 
Uh, you made her feel bad. Real flowers? Oh yeah, I probably saw it on the way down. Probably didn't realize what it was, but okay. でも、この頃、売り場まで電話が通じないんです。ですから、自分で作ってみたんですが、恥を忍んで申しますと、私は綺麗な花束というものが正確には理解できないんです。That's okay. I had some knowledge about robots. Before the outbreak of the Great War, they comprised one of the prime export industries in the country that had once existed here. They were so exquisitely built that they could not be told apart from human beings with just a single glance. They thought of nothing but serving humans and labored for the good of all mankind. Even so, they have something very odd about the way that this thing standing before my eyes was trying to appease me. Are you broken or something? She answered as if it were a matter of fact. バックアップ用電池が消耗しているので、交換が必要です。サポートセンターとの通信が確立できません。メンテナンスコールを送信していますが、受講されません。パーソナルデータバックアップアーカイブに接続できません。K2部動力ユニットが摩耗しているので、交
It was in a place far colder than this. In a village that just a few survivors of the final massacre had established just inside the perimeter of the third line. All this shit's going over my head, so I know how he feels about what she said. The inhabitants of that village had fashioned a strange cylindrical idol out of the wreckage of battle mechs and placed it in a church with a shattered roof. They named it after a summer flowers that had disappeared from this earth long, long ago. They had danced in circles around that isle, praying to it in words I could not understand. They truly believed that if they did so, they could get the rain to stop falling. I came to as soon as I heard her voice. She continued to be totally unconcerned about the fact that a grenade launcher had just been leveled at her. Damn, what happened to this world? She bowed deeply as she said this. This was a sarcophagus city. A dead zone, abandoned by its inhabitants after it was devastated by a bombardment of biochemical warheads filled with long half-life payloads during the early stages of the war. It was said that the direct causes of the war were global overpopulation and the failure of the space colonization project, combined with the total depletion of natural resources. Not that it mattered any longer. The earth overflowed with foolish and selfish human beings back then, and the biggest fools among them pressed the buttons that caused the orbital satellites to fire their germ bomb warheads. Their intent was probably to lie in wait until the bombardment was over, and then to quietly seize control of everything afterwards. However, not a single person came back to re-inhabit these cities. All the inhabitants of the town surrounding the germ bomb cities had either been vaporized in thermonuclear warhead strikes. One year after the outbreak of the war, Earth's human population had been cut in half. That number was halved again by the end of the second year, and halved again and again every following year. After the tenth year had passed, the countries that had begun the war no longer existed. But even then, the war did not end. People worked so hard to slaughter each other that even when there were no humans left to fight, they continued to airdrop autonomous battle necks, collectively known as warmongers, in order to continue the bloodshed. Because the point of the war was no longer the conquest of the land, it had become nothing other than the internectine creed of revenge and massacre. The world had become empty indeed, and people who had the leisure to do such things as count the population vanished from the face of the earth. The purpose of life became merely to live, and so man began to produce nothing other than man. That situation dragged on for twenty long years. It was then when the rain began to fall. The rain continued to fall without regard for day or night, snatching away even the sunlight from this world and obliterating the seasons. It poisons the soil and the wasser, withers the plants, cracks concrete, and turns steel into rusty garbage. Even the act of man giving birth to man would now come to naught, or so it seemed. There was nothing left in this world but dirt immersed in poison and unspeakable ruin. For a junker like me, a sarcophagus city was a mountain of treasure. Now thirty years after the outbreak of the war, the artificial bacteria, for which vaccines were never developed, had all but died off. Even the vast sarcophagus dome that once enveloped the entirety of the city had been eroded away by the rain. Either that is some really strong acid rain, or if that dome wasn't built worth a damn. However, the fact that people continued to avoid this area had not changed. 
prevent the inhabitants war to evacuate, they left behind all their possessions and equipment, all the way down to their pins and needles. Thus, one could find MREs, various medicines, fuel, batteries, precision tools, weapons and ammunition, and all sorts of arcane devices in a more or less preserved state that could no longer be obtained these days in the unused air raid shelters and destroyed military installations. And when one was very lucky indeed, one could find cases of pre-war distilled liquor and cigarettes. Nice. This man's got his priorities straight. I like that. However, if you let your guard down for even a second, you'd quickly pay for trespassing many times over. This was guaranteed by the Warmonger patrols. Autonomous hedgehog hunter-killer tanks and light anti-personnel mention Jaeger drones. All of them still in extermination mode, as well as the proximity mines that could be triggered even by opening doors. Not to mention the unstable floors and scaffoldings that could crumble just by stepping on them, the uncharacterizable fevers that seemed to arise from an infection with mutant bacteria, the hordes of hungry rats, and other junkers who might be better armed. The list went on and on. <laughs> I remember an older Junker telling me that once. That Junker and I partnered up some time ago, and we worked together for about a year. My partner, whose chatter was annoying, but still as a Junker could be doubted, serves a role as Scout, and I as a role as the Enforcer. As we shared a drink of pre-war J&B that we had discovered together one day, my partner informed me about the existence of a few sarcophagus cities located in an unplundered strip of the East Coast. He told me about the abundant riches and untold dangers that lay therein. I pressed for more details, but my partner said nothing more on the matter. Instead, he repeated himself by saying, Do not talk to it. It's not a thing that is of this world, with a grimace that further distorted his face, whose nose had already been badly disfigured by some shrapnel from a fragmentation grenade. I think my partner said a few other things, but I couldn't remember what they were anymore. Eventually, that junker got ensnared by an obvious booby trap and died too. His final words were, a can of sardines from my hometown brings back memories. That's why I buried my erstwhile partner along with a can of the stuff after digging his grave. At the time, I wished that his last words had been a little less desolate and a little more stoic. Even now, I continue to wish that. Hmm. このように色およびパターンを変化させることができます。え、私の金属10年を記念して、館長さんとスタッフの皆さんからお送りいただいたものです。The most irritating thing in this entire sarcophagus city showed off her functions to me with exhaustive courtesy. So that's what that is. This was nothing more or less than a bad joke. カード印刷機能では当館のプログラムと今月の天文現象案内、当デパートの祭事案内、それに周辺地図、各種割引券などをご用意できます。She produced a card from the slot on her left ear like it was a magic trick. I took the proffered card, opened it, and took a glance. It was an antique made of ink and paper from 30 years ago. The small letters were so severely blurred out that I could barely read them, and even the right margins were completely illegible. At the Flower Crest Rooftop Planetarium this month, Planetarium Projections, The Autumn Stars, and Cons... 
special features, the reverie of mankind spreading... No, we are expecting our 2,500,000 customer to... I decided to ignore it instead. Into the butt pocket it goes. Smiling the entire time, she cheerfully looked on as my fingers crumpled the card into a wad. You know what? I think now's a good time to leave things off. We've already covered a lot of ground about... Like, we've already got a good bit of backstory ready to go, and I think this can segue into some cutesy moments for a later episode. So, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it here. So, till next time, hey, this has been your German boy. Auf Wiedersehen.